they like to talk about Jesus as a social role model, uh, you know, a, a reformer, a, a really good, a really good person who taught us a lot of things. But they don't, they don't like the part of Jesus as divine because it's exclusive. It's an exclusive claim. Mm-hmm. some of these tenets of theological liberalism because these really uh, are what informs the theology of the progressive Christian movement. So David, in theological liberalism, what's the view of Jesus' divinity as, as the deity of Jesus? What's, how's that viewed? Well, so early on, the, the founders of um, theological liberalism, who were largely white, elite, mostly New Englanders in the, uh, in the 19th century, were looking for a civic religion for the new United States of America. So they wanted a religion that everyone had access to and was not overly exclusive. In fact, they were really, in some ways, they were responding against what they considered to be the horrors of their Calvinist ancestors, mm. who, were, who they considered to be bigoted and narrow and restrictive and have a very dark view of humanity. So they were sort of responding against that. And if you're going to build uh, a civic religion, it, it really can't be very exclusive. And so early on, one of the very first things that theological liberals did was begin to argue that Jesus is just a good person. He's a role model. You need to do that if you're a theological liberal, because if Jesus is divine, if he's who he says he is, the son of God, then he's not just one way to God. He's the only way to God. And so early on, one, again, one of the first changes that liberals made was a change towards universalism because they needed a religion mm. that was exclusive. And so uh, Jesus has always been a problem. Jesus as divine, Jesus as the son of God has always been a problem for liberalism. You still see it in the writings of progressives today that they, they like to talk about Jesus as a social role model, uh, you know, a, a reformer, a, a, really good, a really good person who taught us a lot of things, but they don't, they don't like the part of Jesus as divine because it's exclusive. It's an exclusive claim. And where I think we're seeing this a lot today in the progressive church is coming from Richard Rohr, who is a spiritual father to so many in the progressive camp. And I've mentioned this on the podcast before, so I won't belabor the point. But Richard Rohr sort of hints at this when he says, our tendency is always to worship the messenger. But he says, when he's talking about this Christ consciousness and this cosmic Christ, he says, Jesus is a model and exemplar. So essentially what Jesus does is what we can, we can also have this Christ consciousness and and lay claim to this cosmic Christ that Jesus was able to do as this highly evolved person. And I don't know if Rohr outright denies the deity of Jesus, but he definitely hints at it by saying, you know, we we always want to worship the messenger, but he's really our example. And so I think that's one of the ways we see that manifest today. Yeah. In fact, um, in one of the articles I read from him, he he made that kind of statement, but then he quickly followed it up by saying, uh, this allows us to have interfaith dialogue. Yeah. And so that's a critical statement because that tells you what he's actually after. Mm-hmm. He he wants a an access to God that's not limited to Jesus, and you would want that again if you were um, trying to build a civic religion, a religion that sort of allowed everybody to come and and uh, was built on sentiment rather than upon the authority of Scripture or upon the foundation of Christ and the apostles. And so that's what he's really after is um, is the reduction of Jesus from the way to Jesus as just one way. He's Mm. just one available way to get to God. Yes. 